even sung today, um, delightfully to be sung by our choir behind us. We're going to begin our worship with our first hymn, which is number 199, Immortal, Invisible. Would you please stand? to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary, as well for the body as for the soul. Wherefore, I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice, unto the throne of heavenly grace, saying after me. Almighty and most 
verse 1 and verses 22 to 31. Before the beginning of the earth, when there were no depths, I was brought forth, when there were no springs abounding with water, before the mountains had been shaped, before the hills, I was brought forth, when he had not yet made earth and fields, or the world's first bits of soil, when he established the heavens, I was there when he drew a circle on the face of the deep, when he made firm the skies above, when he established the fountains of the deep, when he assigned to the sea its limit, so that the waters might not transgress his command, when he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was beside him like a master worker, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing before him always, rejoicing in his inhabited world, and delighting in the human race. Thanks be to God. Second 
person is taken from Colossians chapter 1. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers. All things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. Thanks be to God.
just by Martin Powell. The music is a Silesian folk song. Jesus, and it's also known as a Christ hymn that may well have been in circulation before the letter to the Colossians was written. We don't know when that letter was written, but it's certain that Christian communities existed before them and was and that they were worshipping and spreading the good news of Jesus at that time. So there are likely to have been words with which the Christians were familiar with. And of course, describing Jesus and his relationship with God the Father and the Holy Spirit has never been easy. Disputes have raged about it. They raged, in fact, far more seriously and violently than those currently going on in the Church of England at the moment. And it made me think of how we see Jesus. The time for that raging about who Jesus was has finished, but we still have ways in which we personally see Jesus. 
and they might develop over time. I know that my understanding has broadened since I began to study theology, but I had changes of, in how I perceived Jesus before that too. So I wonder what you thought about Jesus when you were a child. The theologian Brian McLaren talks about seven Jesuses that he experiences throughout his life. And he describes his childhood Jesus as straightforward, a man born to die, and through that, saving us from sin. It sounds very straightforward, but like a process and a transaction. Through Jesus, salvation happened. It's almost like a sort of key. But then, what about us as teenagers? McLaren's second Jesus was much more personal, one of presence and feeling, a charismatic Jesus. However, both of these Jesuses seem to be quite individualistic. It's all about me and my experience. What about the world? What about God's purposes for history? And from this, McLaren describes another relationship with Jesus, which he labels as a Roman Catholic Jesus, of stability throughout the ages, of the Eucharist, of body and blood being um, used as a celebration, Jesus at the heart of worship in communion, the golden thread on which the church has evolved. But there are some other Jesuses out there too. There's an Eastern Orthodox Jesus, one of a similar stability as the Catholic one, because of course they were all in the same um, Christian family up until the Great Schism but one of mystery, to believe and be content that we don't know all of the answers. And then there are the Jesuses of justice on a worldwide and a personal scale. And there is the Jesus of peace, forsaking all conflict, even in self-defense, turning the other cheek. Now these sound like a real mixture Sometimes a matter of emphasis, sometimes they appear contradictory. And that's realistic, because proclaiming Jesus is complex, and how each of us sees God is also complex and different. And what I love about the Church of England is that we're able to share so many of these different aspects of worship and how we see God in tension. As Christians in this geographical country, with our traditions and culture interwoven within our worship, I feel very lucky to be part of our church. We're sometimes, of course, accused of being a bit flimsy, having insufficient certitude. But I would defend us by saying that Jesus is bigger than our attempt to categorise and divide, than to pigeonhole, and that to make into something that we can describe. And so our central task is to proclaim Jesus. And this hymn that we heard in Colossians from that letter is a great starting point. It is fitting that also that we gather today to share in singing God's praises. And like the hymn of the Colossians, our hymns are often well loved because of the place they have held in our hearts for many years. And they also describe how we think of God in so many different ways and in many well-loved and meaningful ways. And so as we ponder this week to come, can we ask ourselves, how do we see Jesus? Try to put it in your own words, however simply, however feeble that might be. It might be more like the descriptions I've already mentioned to you, but it could also be something completely different. But what is certain is Jesus will welcome us home. So I'll end by repeating some of the Christ hymn to the Colossians that we heard earlier as a reminder of that. He is the image of the invisible God, 
the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, all things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, all things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things and in him all things hold together. And when I hear that, I think of the church holding together. He is the head of that body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn of the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. In him, the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him, God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven. And here we come to the bit about peace, by making peace through the blood of his cross. So I urge you to think of who Jesus is for you this week and to try to articulate it in whatever words you can muster. Amen. Let us pray. Worthy art thou, our Lord and our God, to receive glory and honour and power. For thou didst create all things, and by thy will they existed and were created. To him who sits upon the throne, and to the Lamb be blessing and honour, and glory and might, for ever and ever. Amen. O God, Almighty Father, King of King and Lord of our rulers, Grant that the hearts and minds of all those who go out before us, our leaders, our government, all people of learning, all people of wealth, may be so filled with the love of thy Lord, and of that which is righteous and life-giving, that they may serve as a wholesome salt unto the earth, and be worthy stewards of thy good and perfect gift. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we guard, we beseech thee, with thy divine pity, the pains of all thy children, and grant that the passion of our Lord and his infinite love may make fruitful for good the tribulations of the innocent, the sufferings of the sick, and the sufferings of the bereaved. Through him who suffered in our flesh and died for our sake, the same thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Be present, O merciful God, and protect us through the silent hours of this coming evening and night, so that we who are wearied by the changes and chances of this fleeting world we impose upon thy eternal changelessness through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so in some moments of silence, we make our own prayers to God, our Father. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and has promised that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfil now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, 
granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. So now the notices, and you will see that at the back there are some notice sheets to take away. Um, there are plenty of notices on them. Please do read and digest. The next service here will be at 9 a.m. next Sunday. Um, Holy Communion it will be, and you are very welcome there. We have the 100 Club draw. I'm going to draw a lucky winner. So the number is number 61. So it's Mark Davis. <laughs> okay, and just at this point, the, the um, 100 Club will be... Um, in April, it's a chance to join the, the draw for the 100 clubs, so please do um, pay attention to Heather, who will be, I'm sure, coming with these pieces of paper for you to sign up and pick They're your favourite candidates. They're at the back of the church. Wonderful. And so it's now time for our final hymn, which is number 105 all creatures of our God and King. And we're going to be leaving out verses 5 and 6. Would you please stand?
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen.